Good morning and welcome to this time of morning prayer uh, streamed from uh, St Peter's Limpsfield uh, Rectory Office. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory for ever. As a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, your only Son was lifted up that he might draw the whole world to himself. May we walk this day in the way of the cross and always be ready to share its weight, declaring your love for all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever song of lamentation from the book of lamentations uh, chapter one is it nothing to you all you who pass by look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow which was brought upon me which the lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger for these things i weep my eyes flow with tears for a comforter is far from me one to revive my courage. Remember my affliction and my bitterness, the wormwood and the gall, but this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that we should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord, for the Lord will not reject for ever. Though he causes grief, he will have compassion. According to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 102 O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my crying come before you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me. When I call, make haste to answer me, for my days are consumed in smoke, and my bones burn away as in a furnace. My heart is smitten down and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. From the sound of my groaning, my bones cleave fast to my skin. I am become like a vulture in the wilderness like an owl that haunts the ruins. I keep watch and have become like a sparrow, solitary upon the housetop. My enemies revile me all the day long. And those who rage at me have sworn together against me. I have eaten ashes for bread and mingled my drink with weeping because of your indignation and wrath. For you have taken me up and cast me down. My days fade away like a shadow. And I am withered like grass. But you, O Lord, shall endure forever. And your name through all generations. You will arise and have pity on Zion. It is time to have mercy upon her. Surely the time has come. For your servants love her very stones. 
and feel compassion for her dust. Then shall the nations fear your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. And the Lord has built up Zion and shown himself in glory when he has turned to the prayer of the destitute and has not despised their plea. Have pity on our frailty, O God, and in the hour of our death, cast us not away as clothing that is worn, for you are our eternal refuge, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The first reading from the Book of Wisdom, beginning at the first chapter and the 16th verse. But the ungodly, by their words and deeds, summoned death. Considering him a friend, they pined away and made a covenant with him, because they are fit to belong to his company. For they reasoned unsoundly, saying to themselves, Short and sorrowful is our life, and there is no remedy when a life comes to its end, and no one has been known to return from Hades. Let us lie in wait for the righteous man, because he is inconvenient to us and opposes our actions. He reproaches us for sins against the law and accuses us of sins against our training. He professes to have knowledge of God and calls himself a child of the Lord. He became to us a reproof of our thoughts. The very sight of him is a burden to us, because his manner of life is unlike that of others and his ways are strange. We are considered by him as something base, and he avoids our ways as unclean. He calls the last end of the righteous happy, and boasts that God is his Father. Let us see if his words are true, and let us test what will happen at the end of his life. For if the righteous man is God's child, he will help him, and will deliver him from the hand of his adversaries. Let us test him with insult and torture so that we may find out how gentle he is and make trial of his forbearance. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to what he says, he will be protected. Thus they reasoned, but they were led astray, for their wickedness blinded them. And they did not know the secret purposes of God, nor hoped for the wages of holiness nor discerned the prize for blameless souls. A canticle, a song of the Lord's gracious deeds from Isaiah chapter 63. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praises of the Most High. Who is this that comes from Edom? coming with Bosra, his garments stained crimson. Who is this in glorious apparel, marching in the greatness of his strength? It is I who announce that right has won the day. It is I, says the Lord, for I am mighty to save. Why are your robes all red, O Lord, and your garments like theirs who tread the winepress? I have trodden the winepress alone, and from the peoples no one was with me. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praises of the Most High, all that God has done for us in his mercy, by his many acts of love. For God said, surely they are my people, my children, who will not deal falsely. And he became their saviour in all their distress. So God redeemed them by his love and pity. He lifted them up and carried them through all the days of old. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praises of the Most High. The second reading is from the Gospel according to St Luke, the 22nd chapter, beginning at the 54th verse. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. 
but Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, yet another kept insisting, Surely this man was also with them, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? He said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. We preach Christ crucified, the power of God and the wisdom of God. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The Gospel Canticle, the Benedictus, uh, the Song of Zechariah from Luke chapter 1. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved it is the power of God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old. To save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. Let us pray. Lord, 
we for this holy week we pray for your church in this and every place for our life and witness in the midst of the losses of this present time and now being unable to gather physically to worship we give you thanks for the abiding uh, love and prayers of your people in this parish in our sister parishes in Linsfield Chart and Tatsfield in your church throughout the world as your people bear the light of Christ and recognise it uh, in the world and seek to serve it in those places of darkness where hope uh, seems lost. We pray especially for these coming days at the heart of our Christian faith and we pray for our witness in the worship that we can share and in our own prayers and witness in our daily lives. May your church point away from itself and to your saving love in Christ for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time of global emergency uh, and plans to resist the coronavirus, we pray for all those who are sick and all those who care for them. Lord, we pray, help each of us as we can to do our part in our prayers and in our actions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We hold before God all those who have particularly asked for our prayers and those with no one to pray or to care for them. Pray for those near to death. For the comfort and hope of the Holy Spirit in their hearts. And for those who have recently died and all who mourn them. In the hope of Christ crucified and risen. May the reality and darkness of death when we face it not have the final word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give thanks for uh, abiding love and service in the church and in the world, for all those who give of themselves for others. And especially today we give thanks for and rejoice with Gordon and Evie Horning on the celebration of their diamond wedding uh, on this past Monday the 6th of April. We give thanks for them both and for the witness of their long and loving marriage, uh, marriage in God showing 
that covenant love which is one of the clearest signs of God's love with us and among us. We pray for them and for others uh, celebrating special days, birthdays and anniversaries at this time. Lord, in your abundant love, hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, set us free to serve him with joy. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for this morning prayer. Uh, and we'll be streaming again from St Peter's Limsfield uh, tomorrow, Maundy Thursday, at uh, six o'clock. Uh, and then in the coming days on Good Friday, uh, a special uh, short uh, service for especially families and children at 11 o'clock. Uh, and then at three o'clock. And then on Easter Sunday at 11 o'clock for a festival Eucharist. Thank you and God bless our days.